Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Travel Tech. So in my previous two videos, you might have seen the unboxing features and the installation of the T130 triple channel dash cam by Vio4. In this video, I'll be showing you a detailed review of its video samples, its license plate readability, the different ways the camera can capture the surroundings of the car, the in-app settings for the camera in order to change the video settings. So all this information clubbed together in a single video for your convenience. And guys, this video has taken an immense amount of work and an immense amount of effort to bring in front of you. So make sure to recognize that effort by hitting the subscribe button of Travel Tech right away. And also do not forget to like this video. I hope you will support my work and I hope you inspire me to bring more and more videos like this. So let's not waste any time and dive down straight into the detailed video review of the VO4 T130 triple channel dash cam. So as you've seen in the unboxing, this is a three channel dash camera, which means there is a front camera right here and there is an interior camera at the back. Along with this, there is a separate rear camera. So talking about the front camera, guys, this goes up and down to a degree level of 25 degrees. So as you're seeing right now, this can adjust to an angle level of 25 degrees. Along with that, there is an interior dash cam which rotates horizontally at 90 degrees. So as you can see, it can turn 90 degrees horizontally in one direction and the entire interior cam assembly itself can rotate up and down to a degree of 60 degrees. Now along with this here is the rear camera and this rotates 360 degrees which means you can adjust it to any angle you want and it can record both the rear of the car and of course also the interior of the car from a rear perspective. Now if you go ahead and rotate the rear camera to the inside so as you can see here you're getting a rear cabin view from the rear of the car using the rear camera. So this is one extra option which you're getting using this rear camera from the dash cam. So this three channel dash cam is actually versatile in this aspect and offers you a lot of convenience and a lot of flexibility in terms of getting the right shot. So guys, as you can see, here is the app view of the VO4 cam. On top, on the left here, you find the interior camera recording. On the right is the rear camera recording and at the bottom, with a wide lens here is the front camera recording now you get this display within the app so you can monitor all three cameras together and in case if you want to take a look at individual cameras there is a button given down below so as you can see here is a switch camera button so i'll just zoom out just to show you guys how well it works so here is the live view and if i click on the switch camera button so now it has changed to the front cam view if i click it back again now it has changed to the interior cam view and now the rear camera view is being shown and of course, you can get back to the all the three cam thumbnail view by taking on the switch camera button back again. So this is actually really good. And of course, you can get all three camera views at a single point. So you can monitor what the dash camera is recording at any given particular moment on all three different cameras. And of course, you can also adjust the various camera angles based on your convenience. Now, taking a look at the video sample in daytime condition. Now, these are overcast conditions because monsoon has already set over the area where I'm living and that's why the video is a bit dull but nevertheless if we want to take a look at the license plate readability of this camera now as you can see there's a Hyundai Creta in front and it's about 20 to 30 feet away and if I just go ahead and zoom in on the license plate at such a high distance now I can individually make out the letters and the numbers at this far distance and that's actually really good now if I just go ahead and close in on the car a bit more and then try to zoom in on the license plate now let's take a look now this is a very clear and a very legible license plate readability and this is the best this camera can do at 2k resolution and this is really impressive for a camera like this so taking a look at the rest of the footage i think again as i told you the video looks pretty much natural uh, the brightness and the contrast the saturation levels are all pretty decent now taking a look at the interior cam now this also has a slight variation in the color levels but nevertheless the field of view of this interior cam is about 165 degrees and it covers the entire area the left and the right door part so that's a very convenient feature because if someone turns up at the door of the car you can record their face their actions while they're standing on the door especially if it's a policeman or someone else and of course anyone who is inside the cabin all their actions are going to be recorded taking a look at the rear camera guys now this rear camera quality is average at best and the license plate readability is also only good at a very close range now overall this will provide you a good picture in terms of what's happening behind the car but if you want to take a look at any of the specific details within the video that might not be a good idea for this particular rear dash cam now if we go ahead and take a look at the license plate of the same car back again at a close range 
Now as you can see it is slightly blurred but can still make out the individual letters and the numbers. So that's a cool thing and that's a really good thing for a 1080p 30fps rear camera but this works only at a very close range and the farther the vehicle moves away from the camera the lesser you will be able to make out any of the license plates using the rear camera. Now taking a look at the night footage of this camera, I think this is really impressive for a night footage again because the color saturation levels, the brightness and contrast levels look very much natural. None of them are exaggerated or underwhelming and it looks pretty similar to what we can see with our naked eye. So that's a really good thing and if I go ahead and take a look at the license plate of the car which is moving ahead of me, now it's pretty close and I'll just zoom in. So here you go, this is a good license plate read at night conditions at a close range. All individual letters and numbers are clearly out there and you can make them out easily. Now if I just go ahead and uh, wait for the car to move away, maybe about 20 to 30 feet away from my car and then if I go ahead and zoom in. Now again this is really good, this is really impressive. At such a high distance at night, all individual letters and numbers can be made out and that's a really good thing for this camera at night conditions. Now I'm really impressed with the camera quality and the license plate readability of this camera. This is something what is expected from this camera at such a high price range and it is living up to its name. Now taking a look at the rear camera footage at night, well as you can see it has a lot of glare of the headlights of the vehicles which are coming from the back. You cannot see any specific details in proper but in general the overall footage you can make out what's happening behind the car, what vehicles are coming and going in and the nearby conditions are pretty much shown well. Well, except for that, there's nothing much else this rear camera can do at night conditions because it's entirely covered up with glare and this is the kind of experience you will be having with the rear camera at night conditions. Now the interior cam footage at night turns into infrared automatically if you set it or you can turn it off as well if you just want a regular color video. But the regular video will turn out darker because inside the cabin at night there won't be much light. So setting it under infrared light, this is the video which you're going to get and this is how the video footage is going to look like. So there are certain important points which you should know regarding this camera, regarding the settings of the camera from which you can alter the video's resolution and alter the video's exposure level as well. So in order to do that, first you have to stop the recording. So there is a red button at the bottom here. So just click on that. So the recording will get stopped as soon as you press on it and then head into the settings button. So as soon as you click on the settings button, so here as you can see it opens a different menu where there are a lot of options present. So in this guys on top there is a video resolution option and currently it is saying as 2K 30fps plus 1080p plus 1080p. So this means the front camera is recording at 2K resolution at 30 frames per second and the interior and the rear camera are recording at 1080p at 30 frames per second. So if you click on that, you can change the resolution of it and here at the bottom you can see you can either change it to a 1080p 30fps or a 2k 30fps. So if you want a smaller file size and you want a longer duration of the video, you can select 1080p 30fps for the front cam or if you want the best video quality, you can select the 2k 30fps option. So right now I'll let it be at 2k 30fps and click on the OK button. So the next option is the loop recording and if you go ahead and click on that you get the option of adjusting the video time duration which means you can adjust the amount of time for which the video is recorded it might either be one minute two minutes three and you get up to 10 minutes and you can completely turn off loop recording if you don't want the older files to get deleted so the next option is the recording audio option so if you go ahead and enable that it will enable the camera to record the audio from inside the car and even from the outside so i'll just disable it so the next important option is the exposure value for the front cam so if you go ahead and click on that you can actually increase or decrease the exposure value of the front cam so this is actually very useful when driving in dark conditions you can actually increase the exposure and when driving in a really bright conditions you can actually decrease the exposure to give you a best video clarity Generally it is set at 0 but you can actually increase that. So let me just go ahead and increase it to, to plus 2 and I'll show you how the change happens. So if I head back onto the thumbnail display. So as you can see now the front camera brightness is much higher compared to the interior cam and the rear cam. And the rear cam brightness is looking a bit dull so let me just go ahead and increase the brightness of the rear cam. So I'll just stop the recording and head it to the settings. And here is the exposure value for the rear camera. If I go ahead and click on that and I'll take it to plus 2, then click on OK and I'll head back. So now as you can see the rear camera brightness also has increased. 
as soon as I increase the exposure value and you can do this for the interior cam as well based on your preference so let's head into the settings again and uh, set the exposure back to zero so I just head into the settings and dive into the exposure value for the front and I'll take it down to zero and again for the rear close down select zero and click on ok so you can do this for all three cameras front interior and rear and that's a really cool thing so next option is the wdr so this means it offers you a wide dynamic range so i'll just enable that so it just means it offers a higher ratio of color management and you can get higher accuracy in the color reproduction the video produces so following this there is a g sensor which is set to currently medium sensitivity if i just go ahead and click on that there is an option of low sensitivity medium and a high sensitivity which means whenever a emergency video needs to be recorded you can select the sensitivity of the sensor so if you want the video to be recorded for even the slightest of the vibrations you can set it to high and if you want the video to be recorded only at a higher level of vibrations you can set it to low so there is a date stamp option which you can enable or disable which means the video recorded will have a date stamp carrying on top of it then following this there is an important option called the bitrate and currently it is set at normal if we go ahead and select on the bitrate it gives you an option of selecting a low bitrate a normal high and a maximum so bitrate basically means the amount of data the video is carrying higher or the maximum bitrate means higher the quality of the video picture lower the bitrate means lower the video clarity and the video quality so basically when you set the high or the maximum bitrate option the camera captures the entire amount of data in the video and the video file is saved with a large amount of file size also along with that because of the higher data it provides you a higher video clarity if you select a lower bitrate the video captures the only minimum required amount of data in order to create that video file and the video quality is comparatively reduced when you either select a normal bitrate so next option is the time lapse recording and of course there is a lot of option in selecting the time lapse it's it can either be one frame second and goes up to 10 frame per second so you can select the variation or the frames per second for the time lapse recording based on your requirement so following this there are system settings uh, that is the time zone you can select the exact time zone so that it displays the accurate time in the video there is a time synchronization option also which makes the dash cam synchronized to your smartphone that's also a really good option following this there is a date format many different countries have many different date formats so currently in india it is dd mmyy so i have selected dd mmyy and clicked on ok so the next option is the boot delay and if you go ahead and click on that currently it is set it off it can extend up to 5 to 10 seconds which means you can select the amount of time duration pa which passes after you turn on the camera in order for the camera to boot up there is an infrared led and this means at night while recording in the interior cabin the camera can switch to infrared light to give you a more brighter video than the regular normal video which might turn out very dark at night conditions of the interior dash cam so you can select it to off you can select it to on or you can select it to automatic the camera automatically detects the amount of light within the cabin and if required it switches on to the infrared mode while recording the video in auto condition so that's about the infrared led you can also select the led status while in normal condition and in parking recording and currently all are set at on you can change that later on now the next option is the parking mode if you go ahead and select on that now here again you get the option of having a low bitrate recording which means a continuous video is going to be recorded but at a low bitrate now i already explained what a low bitrate is the camera will tend to take the minimum amount of information required to make a video so that the file size is smaller and the video quality is also not as good but still you will get a continuous decent manageable video so that is a low bitrate recording otherwise you can also have a time lapse recording from 1 fps to 10 fps and following this you can also have a auto event detection this means the parking monitoring will turn on only when a event is detected which means only when a vibration is detected so all three convenient features are present in the parking monitoring following this the next option is the parking recording timer so if you go ahead and click on that so you can select the amount of duration for which the dash camera should be recording after the car is parked and it starts from a minimum of 30 minutes and extends up to 48 hours which means two days so the longer you select this the higher the amount of car battery which is going to get used and the lower you select the minimum amount of battery is going to be drained from the car so that's a parking mode timer then uh, parking g sensor sensitivity now this is where the auto event detection happens so if you click on the parking g sensor you have three different options low sensitivity medium and high again the same as previous now this is specific for the parking mode parking motion detection is currently set at high you can also change it to low medium or high based on 
your requirement so there is a next toggle option from which you can enable or disable gps within the parking mode generally we don't need gps in the parking mode but if you want you can enable it now here are some of the important options concerning the orientation of the video of all three front interior and rear camera you can rotate the image and you can mirror the image now this is important because in right hand driven countries like india you can actually invert the dash camera and install it in a way that the interior camera faces the right side of the driver but this brings to the difficulty of inverting the image while recording and that can be corrected via these settings that is you can mirror the image and rotate the image and this comes for all three cameras that is front interior and rear so that's also a very convenient feature now there is a notification sounds which can turn on or turn off so in this there are certain options you can turn it off completely you can only keep it for button beep you can only keep it for startup sound and you can turn all on so i'll just keep it for startup sound only and i'll click on okay so this is also helpful if you don't want to be disturbed by the continuous audio uh, prompts or audio notifications coming up from the dash cam if you don't want them you can turn them off or you can specifically turn them on for a few features or you can turn them on for everything there is also a voice notification option which you can enable or disable now this is also very helpful for someone who wants to know the exact status of the dash cam via a voice notification but if you are good enough to know the status just by looking at the dash cam or monitoring its settings you can turn off the voice notification so live video source you can select the all camera rear into your front now this is for the app and uh, you can select all camera and it will show all three different cameras live video on the app following this there is the option to enable or disable the gps as well and the option to select the metric that is the kilometer per hour or the miles per hour now india it is kilometer per hour so let's select kilometer per hour now gps info stamp now the video stamp which comes on top of the video you can actually select what displays there you can turn it off completely you can enable the speed and the coordinates if you just want speed you can select speed if you just want the coordinates to come up you can select just the coordinates then you can also enable or disable the camera model stamp on the video so if you don't want the camera model name to be displayed in the video and you just want speed and gps you can have that as well the frequency is at which the video is recorded it might either be 50 hertz or 60 hertz generally 60 hertz is preferred you can select that then you have the option to format the sd card right within the settings and also along with that there is a reset camera setting as well so there is a wi-fi name ssid you can change the wi-fi name for the dash cam you can change the password of the dash cam and then there is a custom text stamp so if you want some custom data or custom text to be shown on the dash camera on the dash camera's video maybe your youtube channel's name or your vlog name you can have that as well now this is also a new feature which i have not seen before the next option is the car license number so if you want a car license number to be displayed on the stamp on top of the video you can also get that now here is the current storage space and currently it says free space on card is about 100 gb now at the bottom there is an app version which is 3.2.11 and the current firmware version of the dash camera so these are some of the important settings guys i think you should really know this before buying this camera because since you are investing a huge amount if you're purchasing this cam you should definitely know what are the options you're going to get within the app settings and based on what i have seen now this offers a lot of options and a lot of customization for the user and this is definitely something worth checking out Oh, so that was an extensive video covering all the details, all the video details regarding this dash cam. So you guys should tell me what do you think after watching this video. Is this camera worth investing 26,000 rupees and getting it for yourself or do you think a cheaper budget camera will do for you? Well, what I think is if you have a specific requirement of having a three channel dash cam in order to cover the front, rear and the interior of the car and you need to have some flexibility regarding where the camera is directed and you want the video in a particular direction. Well, I think this VO4 T130 might be the right choice for you. And of course, along with being capable of recording videos from three different perspectives, this camera does have a good license plate readability as well. So guys, if you do have any doubts or any more queries, even after you have watched this entire video, you can write that down in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you're interested in purchasing this, the link to purchase this dash cam will be given in the description as well. So head down to the description of this video, you'll find all the relevant links, the video links, the review links and the purchase links, everything at one place. So guys, saying this again, this video has taken a lot of work and planning to bring in front of you. So make sure you recognize that hard work and make sure that you subscribe to my channel and like this video before moving on to the next one. So that's it. This was the video for today. I hope you liked it and until next one, see you.